Time for the Weird and Wacky segment. Abominable Snowman. Oh, not an axe murderer. One of the TAs turned out to be a bot. All right, so our first Weird and Wacky article. A movie written by an algorithm turns out to be hilarious and intense. So here's the thing. You know, you know the, the, the algorithm, the AI that, you know, you, you, you tap like the middle thing in your, in your keyboard on your phone and then it suggests the next word, it suggests the next word. And, you know, there's a lot of these on Facebook or whatever, like, hey, you know, tap, tap and, and share your first 10 words is this really funny line. Well, basically, they took a similar algorithm or, or AI to that and they decided to have it write a movie. So they fed it a ton of sci-fi stuff, including like Transformers and all this, all these movies. And then they, they kind of started like, I, gave, I guess, gave it like a little starter and then it wrote like a nine minute script. And then they actually got some like real actors, including the main actor from Silicon Valley and, and acted this whole thing out. And it's awful, like beyond it's really bad and, 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 and hard to watch. It doesn't make any sense. And like, it's not even normally. And so, so on the one hand, we've had, we've seen AIs that have like written articles that you and I read and were like, Oh my gosh, that was really convincing. This was not, this made me feel like we're a good ways off from Skynet. And I feel really good about that though. In the article, it did mention that the AI named itself Benjamin. And I'm not sure how I feel about AIs naming themselves anything. So that was sort of strange, but I mean, what are your, yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, we do know Jimmy, the AI, so I mean, there is that, there, there is, is that. Jimmy the yeah. AI. Right. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm not that worried about AI taking over the movie business. Oh man, because, so bad. Like, can you imagine AI writing a movie like The Sixth Sense? Yeah, right. That, it was it such would, a great movie because it came out of nowhere. They right? would, well, they would, they would, the AI would ruin it in the first scene. He'd be like, I can't see you because I'm dead. And then, like, yeah. that's the end of the movie. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the whole, like, the whole yeah. movie's over now. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we, we should have done a spoiler alert on that. that oh, yeah. In case well, you haven't seen the success in the last 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it. it just wasn't very good uh, at all. Yeah. It, it, it was funny to watch. I enjoyed about half of it, and then I was all done. So, you know. Yeah, I, I didn't watch any of it. Uh, but the thing I am watching is the UK police. Uh, apparently, they thought they were raiding a marijuana farm, and instead they found an illegally powered Bitcoin mine. Yeah. So there this is go. funny. Uh, so yeah. I, I, and I, I did not learn this until, until relatively recently, but apparently one of the ways that police find marijuana farms is that they use an abundance of power and water, right? Uh, yeah. Like just a the ton. Power for, for grow lights. Yeah, for grow so lights. Grow lights to, yeah. to you know, keep uh, light on these plants to, mm -hmm. to make them grow. Yeah. And the water, obviously, because they're plants. Right, so right. So, so the UK police found a place. It's like, oh, tons of, ton, you know, energy spikes. Obviously, it's a grow farm. And they get there. No, it's not a grow farm. It's 100 computers that are mining uh cryptocurrencies so and, and they were stealing electricity to do it so yeah there you go yeah so mining bitcoin not illegal stealing electricity to do it is illegal. Illegal. A, little yeah, illegal. Bit, a little bit illegal a little yeah. bit illegal mm -hmm. uh, or, or a lot of bit illegal depending on how much you steal i suppose yeah it's crazy crazy speaking yeah. of uh, another crazy i mean we're like we're weird and wacky to the max today so trials begin on a lozenge that rebuilds tooth enamel so you heard me right if your teeth are, you know, getting a little thin on the enamel side, just be able to suck on a lozenge apparently and rebuild yep. enamel, which is just crazy terrifying. I don't even know how I feel about this. I, I read this and I was like, this is so awesome. So it's nuts. You you take one lozenge a day yeah. to maintain your enamel. Right. If you need to rebuild it. Two lozenges a day will help rebuild. And, it, and it's, it's micrometers. Yeah, like micro attaches. Yeah. Yeah, that it'll add on. So it'll take a while to add the enamel back. Right. But I mean, this will hit all of us as we get older, right? Oh, yeah, as man. As you get older, your enamel does wear out mm -hmm. and it causes issues. Yep. Technology and science is amazing. Uh, we're Look. just going to give you a lozenge. No, like that gross uh, stuff yeah. that they make you do at the dentist to do impressions. Like, and, like, yeah. Like, oh, no, oh. Uh, just that's the worst. You're, yeah, it's all good. Just, it kind of reminds me of there's this there's this car wash product that I use uh, if I wash our cars and and you're supposed to it's a wax and you leave the car wet 
and then you uh-huh. spray this. You just mist this spray on it, like it's like like you're doing it, like it's magic, like it's not doing anything. I feel like <laughs> like like literally, you just mist the spray, like barely squirted it on the car. It's like when you do cologne and then you walk through. Yeah, it and that's attached to yes, you. Yeah. yeah, it's like that. Okay. And then and then you're supposed to take your pressure washer and just blast it and it does something where it like it like the the right chemicals in it adhere to the paint and then it washes the rest off anyway it's nuts but when you're all done like the car's smooth like it's been waxed like it's crazy so i, I don't know so it I don't, works it works yeah it it's it but it seems it seems completely stupid because like i've got a wet car now i'm gonna mist this spray barely on it then i'm gonna blast it with a pressure washer and somehow magically it's gonna be waxed at the end of that like that's just it's just nuts so, so. like literally a pressure washer like, like yes you use to, to do your sidewalk yeah stuff. literally yeah on it's, your car? How does that not like rip the car? Well, it's a, it's a special attachment, so it's not oh. so hard. It's not like there's the there's the the concrete pressure washers, and then there's the like little wimpy electric car wash pressure I washers. See. see, so but so still, like, it's like a water pick more than a. It's water still got pick. some pressure. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. It's got some, it'll 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 kick out pretty good. I wouldn't put it in anybody's face. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> anyway, so uh, all right. So next article su- suspended. 115 feet in the air, the world's first floating pool is unveiled in London. And not only is it floating, it's suspended above between two buildings. Yep. And it's completely transparent. So you yep. can see everybody swimming up there, which feels to me like kind of creepy. I'm not going to lie. Like it just feels real creepy to me. Am I wrong? I feel like there's some dude with a telephoto lens just creeping. Taking like pictures? It just, yeah, it just feels creepy. Love. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to ask you, would you swim on this thing? Oh, that's a good or question. In this thing? Uh, yeah, I probably would. It, it, at least briefly, I probably would. Yeah. Um, I mean, it looks terrifying, honestly, but like yeah. it's I, terrifying in the same way that like when you go up to whatever the whatever the tower is that used to be the Sears Tower and they've got like that glass box and you step out on the glass floor and yeah, like nope, you look nope. like mm-hmm. I'll do that. Uh-huh. Nope, nope. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. so need to do that. No. Nope, yeah. Nope, I, that's I'll not, do that. So I would nope. probably swim in it. I would swim in it before I would go in like an AI powered drone like we've talked about, I think. So, I mean, if, <laughs> as far as yeah. things I'm willing to risk, I think that's a pretty light I'm, one. I'm so. not I'm not swimming in this thing. Like, I don't know. That's not like. How is that better than swimming in a regular pool? Oh, it's not. It's just it's just a unique, weird experience. And then you can like swim and have goggles on and like look down at the street and be terrified. And then and I also I also wonder like what happens when this pool gets green? Like it's gonna look real gross in between those two buildings, you know? Like there's <laughs> like there's all these other you know problems that arise with this. It's just yeah. crazy. So with my luck, as I'm I'm swimming through this, like a, a bird is gonna like start pecking like a woodpecker or something. Yeah. I've, I've, we've been having a woodpecker on our house. I don't feel very, like woodpeckers go after glass that much. It doesn't. If d- I was in the pool, it would. <laughs> and, then, and then it would crack the glass and the whole thing would come down. Got it. And then okay. Like, oh, it was good until that woodpecker killed this guy. I think, I, I think the, there. I think the storyline there is it was good until Sanjay got it. I think that's actually yeah. the storyline there. So yeah, probably so. <laughs> uh, and uh, last thing, uh, something that a woodpecker can't peck on uh, an Italian artist, Salvatore Garau sells a invisible sculpture for $18,000. And by the way, shout out to Tech Talk Y'all listener Drew Hawkins for sending this article over. Apparently, this artist, I'm using quotes for that, has sold an invisible sculpture that exists in his mind for $18,000. So get a certificate of authenticity, though. This feels a lot like an NFT, first of all. And second of all, this person should not be referred to as an Italian artist. Possibly insert the word con, con in front of yeah. there. Like, come on, man. It's literally a stand with nothing on it. Like for 18 grand. Like here, you can have a stand with nothing on it. Or you can have this nice used car. You know, like, come on. Like, just, well, I mean. It might be a really nice table for 18 grand. So maybe they bought it <laughs> as a table. It better right? be real fancy and feed me dinner for 18 grand. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> that table got a hand feed me. So I mean, maybe, maybe. I think they talk about the, um, we had previously talked about this too, the the banana that was duct taped to, to yep. the wall, that yep. thing. They talk about that too. 
I feel like there is a level of absurdity that's happening in the art market. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't understand. Well, is I feel all, like they're just laundering money. Is that all that's going on here? Or may, maybe it is. Happening? I mean, I feel like sort of Banksy started pushing these boundaries with like his, you know, his painting that auto destructed and like, but, the, but in, yeah. in a sense, like I can still see that as art and Banksy stuff is still legitimately art he has a message with all yeah, of his art yeah like, like there's an actual thing there an invisible sculpture an invisible sculpture the has message? the message is the message is y'all are all stupid like that's the message like all of you are dumb that's the message i, I, I think I, this goes along with the the fall of humanity into cave people <laughs> times uh, along in with Skynet. Stack Overflow in went Skynet. away, it's... and then people started selling invisible sculptures, and then humanity was doomed. 